Hello, today I'll be teaching about the Bracero programs. But first, we have to go back to the 1940s. In the midst of World War II, massive changes were happening in the U.S. Healthy working class men were sent to the front lines in Europe, resulting in a severe labor shortage in multiple industries, especially in agriculture. Initially, to deal with the shortage, the U.S. had women fill those roles, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough. So in 1942, the United States signed an agreement with Mexico called the Mexican Farm Labor Agreement. In short, this agreement was in order for the U.S. to use the Mexican laborers to fill the shortage. It was supposed to guarantee decent living and working conditions like food, shelter, sanitation, and reasonable wages. On paper, this seems like a good agreement with the U.S., getting the late necessary laborers to support the war effort while Mexico can secure some employment for its citizens, albeit temporarily. Unfortunately, this did not go as planned. For those who were chosen, came to be known as braceros, or laborers. For these braceros, they would gather essentials, sell, sometimes selling heirlooms, livestock, and other valuables just to make the trip to the border, where they would wait in crowds to be hired by farmers. Some would walk and walk to make their journey, some would take trains. However, this, once they made it to the border, that's where their mistreatment began. After standing in line for hours on end in the sun, they would enter into these buildings and then undress. They would be examined by doctors in order to make sure that they were in healthy condition. Mind you, there's no section off areas for privacy, curtains, nothing. There's men of all ages stripped down, standing shoulder to shoulder with almost no understanding of what was going on, beyond just simply getting a job in the U.S. After going through that examination, they went to sign a contract. However, a majority of the men that were trying to get visas... They couldn't read or write. They didn't know what they were signing. They just wanted a job. They were just people just trying to make money to support their families, and yet they're being treated inhumanely and taken advantage of. And just to put the cherry on top, just before leaving the facility, they were hosed down with DDT. What's DDT? DDT is an extremely harmful pesticide that was commonly used in, agri in the agriculture business and was found to be very harmful to humans. So not only were they mistreated inhumanely, they were just sprayed down like cattle. However, their treatment worsens as they spread out amongst the farm owners after being chosen. After being picked by the farmers, they would load into these trucks and be driven to their respective farms. Once on the farm, the contracts were not respected by owners. Braceros lived in awful conditions and worked in even worse conditions. The Work experience was entirely up to the farm workers, which was not a good sign. For a small few, they worked under seemingly humane conditions, but for many, they had to work 12 plus hours a day in the hot sun for mere pennies. To make matters worse, they had to pay for food and other necessities, commonly from the owner, placing them in debt, forcing them to remain under the contract to the owners until they could pay off their debt. And if they tried to get out of their contract, they would be sent back to Mexico with nothing. The mistreatment of the Braceros continued well beyond the World War, with the programs being extended multiple times by agribusinesses well into the 1960s. American citizens returning from the war had to compete with Braceros for jobs in the agriculture, resulting in general mistreatment by American citizens. Truman Moore, a historian who wrote about the programs after their termination in 1964, mind you, this was the programs were, start, were initiated in 1942 referred to Braceros as the slaves we rent. Given what Braceros had to suffer through, their conditions, their working conditions, were essentially identical to that of a slave's. However, for some, there was a silver lining. On multiple accounts of Braceros after programs, some were able to obtain residency and citizenship in the U.S., bringing their families from Mexico or using the money that they built up, they somehow managed to build up over the course of the programs to better their situation back in Mexico. Two specific, on an account of an interview of two ex braceros Ramon Avita and Alvaro Garcia, Garcia. Ramon Avita stated, if we worked hard, did what our bosses wanted, we'd make a lot of money. I thought things were fair in the United States. That it was not about whom you knew, like it was here, but about how hard you worked. Now, I'm not so sure anymore. And you see one side where Ramon, Mr. Ramon Avita, did not get feel like they got anything out of this program. They, were, they felt like they were mistreated. 
And Al Alvaro Garcia had a similar sentiment, but a little different. Al Alvaro stated, I worked hard. It was hard work picking fruit. I didn't come back rich, but I did set up this barbershop. So there was, a, in Alvaro's case, they, there was a little silver lining. Though he didn't get, he didn't come back rich and in a better, in an even significantly better situation than he was before, but he made enough money to set up a barbershop, which he still works to today. So there are clearly multiple issues with the Bracero programs. Only a handful were mentioned, and I, but I suggest going to the Bracero History Archive. It has a bunch of accounts from Bracero's, relatives of Bracero's, even relatives of the farm owners. It shows how important it is for historians to look at every point of view. Although the Bracero program was largely negative for many, it ended up being good for some. A lot of them. And it also ended up pushing forward with the mistreatment, the general mistreatment of Bracero's, pushed forward for a lot of movements later on in the 20th and the 21st century. Thank you for sitting through my presentation and hope you have a good rest of the day.